Honorable Members, good morning. Let us pray. Guide, we beseech thee, Almighty God, members of this House, that they may wisely deliberate for the good of the country and for the glory of thy holy name. Pray, join with me as we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Honorable members, pray be seated. This Honorable House is now in session. Honorable Members, we have met today as a special sitting of the House of Representatives. Item number three, motions. Leader of Government Business. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I beg to move the following resolution. Resolution for the purposes of Section 107, Subsection 2 of the Representation of the People Act, Cap 286A, which reads, Whereas it is provided by Section 107, Subsection 1, of the Representation of the People Act, Cap 286A, hereinafter after referred to as the Act, that the Governor General may make regulations generally for giving effect to the provisions of the Act. The whereas subsection, section 107, subsection 1C, provides that the Governor General may make regulations prescribing the symbols to be used on every ballot paper and the mode of allocation of such symbols to candidates. Whereas section 107 subsection 2 provides that regulations made under the Act is subject to affirmative resolution. And whereas regulations have been made to insert a new symbol to be used on ballot papers under the representation of the people Election Symbols Regulations, Cap 286A. And whereas it is now expedient that the representation of the People's Election Symbols Amendment Number 2 Regulations 2022, attached here to as a schedule, be approved by the House of Representatives. Now, therefore, be it resolved that pursuant to Section 107, Subsection 2, of the Act, the representation of the people, election symbols, amendment number two, regulations 2022, be now approved. Honorable members, the question proposed is that pursuant to section 1072 of the Act, the representation of the people's election symbol, amendment number two, regulation 2. 2022 be now approved. Leader of Government Business. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, only a few days ago, we came here and approved a symbol to be used on the ballot paper as provided for on the, the Representations of the People Act. Now we are here, Mr. Speaker, seeking permission to have another symbol be so approved. And as required by the law, the Governor General has submitted this 
in accordance with the Act for approval by Parliament. In this case, Mr. Speaker, the symbol is the smiling sun, and it's represented by a smile. We know the emotive symbols that's used in social media and with all the radiation going away from that particular smile. And we know the symbols must not be close to each other. So the fact that it has been approved by the Governor General to be submitted to the House and later to the Senate, that there is no similar symbols. Because someone could complain and say, this symbol is similar to mine. As the member for St. David said, we have not been having this because it has not been used. Many of the symbols, they come, they put them there and they have not been used. Whether or not the individual persons will participate in the elections, or at least people will see the symbol on a ballot paper, we do not know. But as required by the law, we are submitting this new symbol to the Honorable House, Mr. Speaker, for approval. Thank you, Leader of Government Business. Honorable Leader of the Opposition. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it has been just a couple of days we were here, but it seems like the wheel is in motion to come back so soon. <laughs> It tells, good Lord say, when you see the clouds set up, you know that it is going to rain. But Mr. Speaker, I stand here today and I think I can say all praise, glory, and honor to the Almighty because the last time, it seems as if it was the last time. <laughs> I wonder if this time would be the last time. Mr. Speaker, In my young political history, and I say young relatively, <laughs> I remember my first real battle was one with one symbol called the wheel. Mr. S Mr. Speaker, you remember the wheel? The wheel in Karaku. For those of you who are kind of pretty young, that was Elvin G. Nimrod. Then we battled the drum. Remember the drum? Winston Flaherty. Then, Mr. Speaker, we had the praying hands. You know, I heard the member for St. David said that there are about 20 symbols there that we can reuse. I mean, both, or I should say all three. The praying hands, Mr. Blaze, the wheel, Nimrod, the drum, Flurry. But you would tell me there are some people in Karaku today, you want to go and use the drum? or the wheel, or even the praying hands. <laughs> when I talk about nostalgia and some people are committed to the symbol, the symbol, I mean, like I said, symbols are inexhaustible. And what we operate with today may be just about two or three in terms of Grenada politics. Well, Mr. Speaker, I could say a lot about symbols and what they represent, the house, the heart, the star. But I think coming here today in such a short space of time, we were here on, on Tuesday and now we're here today. And I, I think the other places meeting at 11 today. Then. Our brother said that he has a big announcement to make on Saturday. One of my former colleagues, MP, asked me if I'm ready to come back into the house. The house has a symbol. But Mr. Speaker, you know I could stand here today and do some house cleaning and, and set the wheel really in motion. I don't have a problem with my brothers and sisters sitting here today, and I don't think I will ever will. As a matter of fact, I would say like your leader, I love you guys. <laughs> but 
But Mr. Speaker, we have now the onset under the umbrella of the House a few new candidates. And someone called me and said, Mr. Speaker, what Palm did in St. Patrick's, that was not the big gaffe. You know. The big gaffe in St. Patrick's was the selection of that man to be the candidate for St. Patrick's West. Huh. I wonder, you know the question that the Americans and the English and the whole world ask? What did the president know and when did he know it? My question is, that I can ask today, what did the Prime Minister know and when did he know it? And should an investigation start? Mr. Speaker, the whole place could get washed. Maybe the House probably needs a cleaning. My friend, my friend from St. David, you remember January 2018? Mr. Speaker, I, that man always have a smile on his face. And the first time I got, I got afraid. I don't, I'm not usually afraid of, of, of people like me. Was when he came to visit me. I was almost shaking in my boots. But we would let sleeping dogs lie, and we would let the symbols that have to be put on the other paper be, I mean, that is, have to be given, let it be given. Brother, Mr. Speaker, I will speak to my former colleague in chambers. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Leader of the Opposition. Honorable Representative for St. David. Yeah, Mr. Speaker, the... You know, there are a lot of clues going around this time and a lot of hints, people drop it and so on. The way the leader of the opposition spoke, I thought that was his symbol, you know. I thought it was the way he's speaking in favor of the symbol. I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if it's his, you know. Because all of a sudden, you have a number of people, it seems that they want to be candidates running independent or with a party because either a party could make representation to the governor general for a symbol or a candidate in the election, so it could be independent. And so we get a lot of surprises. And the leader of the opposition, my, this, the last time we said it probably would have been his last sitting. I'm sure you're happy to come back again for the last time, finally. To, so anything he says, no, I can't disagree with him because even me and him, that's my last sitting, I'll make a big speech too. You know, so um, I want to wish him well if that is the symbol and if he intends to, to contest. I don't know, I say if, if that's his, Mr. Speaker. If I'm going out of order, let me know. I'm still speaking on the symbol. You know. <laughs> the leader of the opposition went out, and nobody had difficulty with that. He's my good friend, so I could say that. I said, yes, he could be, yes, of course, and I'll still visit him before the election. Right? Yeah, I'll have, I have to go and have a conversation with him. Because you see, I want him to come back to the house. Because that's where he belongs, Mr. Speaker. That's where he belongs, to the house. So regardless of what symbol come out, the house is the dominant symbol and is the symbol that people gravitate towards. So today, while I support the motion for the, um, the symbol, I still have the concern and maybe um, in the new sitting of parliament, where, where I'm, I'm sure I will be in the next sitting, the new, the new sitting of parliament after the elections, uh, we'll have to, I think, look at how we could address this issue of continuously adding symbol, as I said the last time. But um, I look forward to who will be this, whoever is this symbol, smiling, the smiling son, you say, Mr. Speaker? Mr. Leader government business, you say, smiling son? <laughs> yeah, well, that interesting symbol. Yeah, the smiling son. So, it's easy in Grenada, as I said, to contest for election. You apply, you get a symbol, you go on, you pay three hundred dollars, and you're a candidate, and that's it. So, I wish my friend all the best, and I wish him well. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.
Thank you, Honorable Representative Foster David. Take it back to me. All right, honorable members, we have a photographer from Barbados who is here, and you may wish okay. to have given him permission to take a photo while we are in session. So if you see that happening, don't be too worried about it. Honorable representative for St. Andrew Northeast. Southeast, sorry. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm not going to join the exchange as it relates to our dear brother. Um, but I know his heart has always been, you know, with this team here. And he would always be, he would always be welcome. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I looked at the, the list. Um, is it, how much is it? About 30 now? Yeah, and it actually reminded me sometime in 1999, somewhere there about, I actually monitored the elections in Nigeria. There were 34 political parties. And I remember the ballot paper was this long, no exaggeration. And they were all active political parties. When I look at the number of symbols we have here, I say to myself, you know, are we all really serious? And so, as Brother, uh, sorry, the, <laughs> the member for St. David's would have indicated, you know, do we keep coming every time to be adding to that list? Is it going to be 100? What is it going to get to eventually? And so I think, Mr. Speaker, when we think about forming a political organization, getting into frontline politics, talking about representation of people and the country and so on, let's make sure we're very serious. You know, I don't know who the persons behind this symbol is, but I'm just saying this is, this is something very serious and we can't be every Monday morning coming to add a symbol to the list and, you know, water down the whole process, right? And, of course, I believe at some point in time the persons who have active symbols there need to review and decide, you know, do you really want to have those symbols still represented or could you redraw them? I don't know. But this is something so very serious that I really want to caution that we don't take it you know, and make it into something that is just watered down. As I said, all due respect to the person requesting the symbol, I have no clue who they are. But I'm just, it's just rather interesting. We have just a few, handful of political parties that have been contesting the general elections here, but we have a long list of about 30 um, um, symbols to represent organizations. Thank you. Thank you, Parliamentary Representative for St. Andrew South East. Leader of Government Business. Oh. Honorable Representative for St. John. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yes, I rise to support the, uh, the symbol and uh, to <clears throat> I might have a little different view because time changes, people evolve. I know that a stone wheel at one time was what was there before. Right now you have uh, metal wheels and all shapes. So again, society as society changes, different symbols means different things. So it has to be a dynamic thing. You have to have changes, right? And even if you have a thousand on there, to me it doesn't matter. If I have to come to Parliament to do my job, I'll do my job. So I have no problems with people taking symbols because maybe during my lifetime I might see other members here having their own symbols too, or wanting their own symbol. <laughs> so I think it's a good thing. It's a give freedom for people to express their views or have something to express the ideology that they want to support. So I give this full support, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Parliamentary Representative for St. John. Leader of Government Business. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Apparently, there is something that my colleague here can confirm, which the rest of us can't. The member for St. David always makes some 
very pointed um, comments. It never crossed my mind that the smiling sun could be an individual symbol for the present leader of the opposition. But I know that we were all close, so I thought perhaps he would have told me. So I would be very surprised if it is such. But we cannot rule out anything, Mr. Speaker. I'll ask him privately after the, um, the session is over. But all the comments made, Mr. Speaker, have the merits. But we will move along the line. I'm sure that one day this House will move to amend these representations of the People Act in accordance with our sister member here, Honorable Eminem Pierre. As he said, maybe we will clean it. If it's there for 20 years, maybe the amendment might say if it's there for 20 years, then you clean it. You get off the list. So I think this will help. It will follow the pattern by the member for St. John. It will help the, the nostalgic relationship that the leader of the opposition is hinting at. And at the same time, the member for St. David and St. Andrew Southeast will have the input also taken care of. But I do agree that this thing is mounting and mounting. And at what time we said 30. I remember publishing, seeing something published in the Gazette. It more looked like 60 to me. They gave all the things that were there. And uh, yes, we will have to do some cleaning, Mr. Speaker. So I commend this motion to the Honorable House so that we continue in the democratic strain. And anyone who so wishes can pass at this point in time can come with a symbol, Mr. Speaker. At the next uh, topic on the agenda, but maybe I'll make some clear remarks as to why we are here, you know, so quickly. And whether we are, we'll be here again. Maybe the Prime Minister has a way of letting them think one, and then they see the, act, the action is in the other boat. So. Whatever it be, it be. But as for now, Mr. Speaker, we recommend this motion to this Honorable House. Thank you, Leader of Government Business. Honorable Members, the question is that pursuant to Section 107.2 of the Act, the representation of the People's Election Symbol Amendment Number 2, Regulation 2022 be now approved. Those who are of that opinion say aye. aye. Of the contrary opinion say nay. Think the ayes have it? The ayes have it. Item number four, bills. The Leader of Government Business. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg to introduce for first reading the Bill for an Act shortly entitled Mutual Exchange of Information on Taxation Matters Amendment Bill 2022. A bill to, ex to amend the Mutual Exchange of Information on Taxation Matters App Cap 20, Cap 202D, to strengthen Grenada's regulatory framework for the automatic exchange of information by removing deficiencies identified during the peer review process shortly entitled Mutual Exchange of Information on Taxation Matters Amendment Bill 2022. Leader of Government Business. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg to move that the relevant standing orders of the House be suspended in order to take the bill through all its stages at the city. Honorable members, the question is that the regular standing orders of the House be suspended to enable the bill to be taken through all its stages at this city. Those who are of that opinion say aye. aye. Of the contrary opinion say nay. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Leader of Government Business. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg to move the second reading of the bill. And I remember the question proposed is that the bill, the Mutual Exchange of Information and Taxation Matters Amendment Bill 2022, be read a second time. Leader of Government Business. Mr. Speaker, I will commence by addressing, again, 
Why were you here so soon? This bill, Mr. Speaker, should have been on the other people. And we should have de debated and uh, approved the bill on Tuesday last when we met. Mr. Speaker, you wish to remind us of a bill which came here earlier. It is around that same time that this bill should have been passed. And this could be some two or three months ago. And I want to remind the nation that this was the bill that barred and banned bearer shares. This is also as a result of the examination by the world body on AML and anti-money laundering and countering terrorism financing. It was in the same report and it gave us a certain time to operate. That report indicated, Mr. Speaker, that we were stronger on external matters. In other words, if we try, if anyone tries money laundering from abroad to bring in the money or to export it for use abroad, we're very good there. But internally, there were some weaknesses that we should correct. Obviously, the bearer shares was the one that legal affairs pushed because from the examination from this body made up of foreigners, mainly talking with our people in Grenada, we got a distinct impression that we moved speedily on this one. And so we came here and the members supported the bearer shares, which is you have a share certificate, no name. It says pay to the bearer of the shares, of these shares. Or the bearer has certain rights in certain areas, but you don't know who that person is. And again, sometimes you operate through a third party, a legal firm or some representative. They say none of that. You could do it, you know, but you must say who the beneficiary, the final beneficiary is. So it's no bearer anymore. It's not the person who brings, receives all the benefits. And we made the amendment in this house, Mr. Speaker. This should have been done about the same time. But if the persons involved realize that if we did not get this one out of the way, because they come and they examine you and you hear from them where they put in weight. So they place a lot of weight of that, so we got this out of the way. And we must never forget, Mr. Speaker, the ramification of not doing it. We know about the blacklisting. If you're black, you know about corresponding banking. All of them, they could shut the country down. Nobody wants the name on the list because of the terrible consequences to the country, to the economy, if we let that happen. Throughout the region, and everybody listens, and you hear a, a list come out, and we say in the forefront of that movement is European Union, but so is, so is Canada, so too is the United States, the UK is now out of the EU, so they're all there. The big, powerful countries of the world, the G7 and the G20, you'll get nothing from them. And you cannot buy or sell or trade in goods where you have to use a foreign currency because you'll be banned. There'll be no correspondent banking for you to get your EC dollars into US a pound or EU currencies. This is a requirement, Mr. Speaker. And it should have been debated and passed so that legal affairs could tell the organization that we have made the amendment. They, they have to do it today, Mr. Speaker. And besides, if it's passed by the Senate later, then legal affairs will be able to send it up. And legal affairs will tell us whether or not they have to rush for a gazette today, this very afternoon. The Attorney General and the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Finance, they are Grenada's, part of Grenada's team, right? 
they, they were evaluated a grenade was evaluated through them so they have a fairly good idea and they have all the deadlines so when the member indicated that you know we were here last week yes it should have been on the other people so in that context we will take the blame but we have moved speedily to meet the deadline and any right thinking person mr speaker will support the move what they will not support is the fact that because we did not get it on the other people we did not use a necessary mechanism to have it corrected and lo and behold yeah, Grenada is on the blacklist and already the correspondent banking is something high high up on the list of priorities not only for the region but for the entire world and if any one of us in the region loses the corresponding banking relationship then we're in serious trouble so we believe that the other place would gladly support it and pass it. Yes, they may blame and say, well, you should have done it last week as usual. Fine. But I don't think anyone in their right mind will not support the passage of this bill, Mr. Speaker. The areas, the last one, Mr. Speaker, as the bearer shares, this one in particular, as you'll see, Mr. Speaker, it removes a section repeal and replace 5b2 which as exists is if a person enters into any arrangement or engages in any practice of which one of the main purposes can reasonably be considered to be to avoid an application imposed under this act or regulations made thereunder, the person shall be subject to the obligation as if the person had not entered into the arrangement or engaged in the practice. So you'll note this has been repealed and it is replaced by to be one a person who makes if it, it says that if you make a false statement it's there then your subject To the act itself a person who makes a false statement or omission in respect of himself this mr speaker replacement of this is if a person enters into any arrangement or engages in any practice the main purpose of one or the main purpose is which to avoid any obligation under this act or its regulation the arrangement of practice may be deemed not to have been entered to so what existed there is you hold the person liable if they did something wrong they use the enter into arrangement to avoid certain obligations so right you say therefore i will penalize you what they're saying now, forget about going to penalize and all the arrangement and so forth. Just deem the thing never happened. So the person could do all they wish. You don't even have to prosecute them. Any bank in the world will therefore say this never happened. And so out it goes. So they made it stiffer for the person trying. You could try it, you know, but you could pay your money and do all this other business. It will deem that it has never happened. And Mr. Speaker, they've inserted a second a paragraph. If you make a false statement, well, you're penalized. So you're saying, well, <laughs> I can't use anybody to do it, so let me just make a false statement. Well, you can't go that route, because if you make that false statement, you will be penalized. And Mr. Speaker, they're substituting a new paragraph setting out the conditions under which a reporting financial institution may appoint a third party as its agent to carry out the duties and obligation imposed by the regulations 
So what they have found is that people use a third party. So if you use a third party to do something, you bear the burden. If it's done correctly, fine. If it's done incorrectly, don't ask me to go after the third party. It is you and you alone that you are coming after. So you can't pass anything of true a third party. This, Mr. Speaker, is the general context of the bill and tightening up anyway. And when these people come from abroad, they have gone around the world and they have seen what had happened in other areas and they are coming to close any loophole in the various countries that they are evaluating. In Grenada case, these are the two main issues. There are others, but not as significant as this. So I, I don't um, believe that we'll be coming back here anytime soon with a bill that is overhead for blacklisting. They may come again and they may write in the next couple of months and say, you should move. And the other two recommendations, so be it. And I believe it will be brought to this honorable place. So, Mr. Speaker, I recommend this bill, the amendment to the, the, the Information and Tax Matters Act for its second reading. Honorable Representative for St. Patrick West. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise to give my support to the bill as presented by the leader of government business, but not without making some observations to build on what on some of the observations I made in this house a couple of months ago when this bill was first presented. Mr. Speaker, the fact that we are here on such short notice to deal with these amendments, in my opinion, Mr. Speaker, it speaks to a level of indecent haste on the part of small developing economies to respond and to satisfy the desires of the more developed countries, the OECD countries. Mr. Speaker, two, two, two things I want to raise. We speak of peer review. I would like to know who, you know, the composition of that peer group and what, what influence the small, vulnerable economies have in that group, if they are members at all of that peer group, that is, doing the review to determine the deficiencies that we have to address to satisfy their main requirements, not ours. We are not a victim of terrorist financing, and neither do we, as I know, contribute to that in any, in any way. In the same countries, the terrorists come from the same countries and their allies, not, not, not the small developing countries in our region. But yet we have to stand the consequences of not responding immediately. And it's no longer informational request, you know. It's automatic now. You don't have to request it anymore. You have to provide it, even though they do not request it. Because that's what the peers, the group, when they meet in the forum, that's what they decide. Mr. Speaker, we know as a fact that 9-11 changed the face of global financing and networking among financial institutions. That infrastructure was destroyed. And therefore, this whole issue of it was the terrorists who financed what happened at 9-11 and the use of London money, we, 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 we cannot escape the consequences. But the point I'm making, Mr. Speaker, 
What are we asking in return? For the additional cost that the banking system in our country has to endure, that we ultimately have to pay for. Because when you look at the plethora of charges now by commercial banks, it makes no, makes no sense. Because when you add up those charges, it's more than the interest you get on your savings. So why save? And no one, and this is where I am a bit annoyed with, with our the, the C, CTF, the Caribbean Financial Action Task Force. They are not forceful enough, Mr. Speaker, in demanding that those countries who are seeking our assistance, and because they have the big stick, they can blackmail, they can get a bank to dis discontinue the correspondent relationship. We are the bank, the risk. That's what they do, they're the bank. They cut you off. Mr. Speaker, we recall the time when we were less, <laughs> less developed, at a lower level of development. Check how many foreign banks we had in Grenada. We had the Barclays, the CIBC, the Royal Bank, the you know, Scotia. The cooperative bank was what we used to call the penny bank. Now the cooperative bank is number one, even to the extent where they could take over a foreign bank. <laughs> You know why? Because our region is no longer seen as an area of interest. The additional cost them, it doesn't worth it. They can go to other countries where the volume of trade is many times bigger than what is operating there, so they'll sell off. But by so doing, the risk of the banking, and even the risk and the loss of correspondent banks could become even greater. So, Mr. Speaker, as I said, I am not against those measures because that's, you know, that in terms of the whole global financial architecture, we have to ensure that, you know, things go right. But it is too lopsided. And our region, our regional leaders are not vocal enough in bringing to the attention of those countries the consequences to us of those measures that we have to put in place. And let us not believe that they will end there. This is not the end of the, of the intervention. We have seen the disappearance of offshore banking in our region. They are coming next to a CBI. Let us, this might be my last statement in this house, but I'll tell you, Mr. Speaker, it will come. We'll come back. This house will have to deliberate because they will destroy that CBI program, Mr. Speaker. And I'm sending out a warning. Countries that rely heavily on CBI funding for the development programs in the future, they have to think twice. They'll have to think again. It will not be a major factor in financing of development projects in our region because they will go after it and ensure that you put an end to that program. So, Mr. Speaker, I am saying that we have to start, we have to become more articulate. We have to demand more for our region. We can, we can, we can fight them in, in, in terms of their the strength, but I, I believe we can have a more active voice. When was the last time we asked for any assistance from those, from those countries? Mr. Speaker, again, I ask, Peer review by whom? Uh, <laughs> who, comp who comprise those peers? And what, what, what influence do we have on that, in that forum, Mr. Speaker? None. We might, if we are members at all, we just have to accept what they dictate or bear the consequences. But, Mr. Speaker, I'm saying, even if it may not result in any positive action, but just having that voice, being more vocal in understanding the consequences to our economies of threat of blacklisting, debunking, and de de risking, 
whether you lose all of your correspondent relationship, that, that's, the, that's the big stick they hold over your head to force, force us into compliance. And we hastily move to do so. As the member said, we can't even wait, we can't even wait for an, a new, new term. We have to do it now. That's not fair. Mr. Speaker, again, let me just conclude making that clarion call. We have to be, we have to let our voices be heard. And demanding more, demanding assistance. Our financial institutions, nobody will want to bank, nobody will want to go to, 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 to save money anymore. They might go to credit unions, but credit unions don't have that kind of corresponding relationship. Oh there. So what do we do? Mr. Speaker, I'm asking the leader of government business to explain to us more that peer review, who comprises it, and what, what say do we have in the review? Because it seems as though, well, we all agree, sit down and agree that these are measures we must take immediately. It might be okay, globally, but look at the implications for our own domestic financial institutions. But even more ominous, Mr. Speaker, first and quite immediate, the possibility of losing your correspondence relationship with a bank out there because our foreign banks, they keep diminishing. While we say our economies are growing and finance being the, 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 the lifeblood of an economy, but what we see, more money will be stashed under the mattress than going to the bank, for what? So when you do that, aren't you contracting our economy? Because if, if your veins and arteries are clogged, the blood can flow. So when we clog up the banking system, how do we expect to have expanded trade and development? Mr. Speaker, I think we need to do more than what we are doing now. All the way support this bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Representative for St. Patrick West. Thank you. Honorable Representative for St. David. Thank you very much. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, this is, we made an amendment to the Principal Act in 2017, and then we come here now, we make it another amendment because a peer review was done and you said that Grenada did not have the necessary legislative framework to implement the legislation. And when we complain about the way we are treated, they give this one in a very nice name. It's called the Mutual Exchange of Information and Taxation Matters. So it gives the impression that you're doing it mutually. Both sides, we can request from the other side, the big developed countries, taxation information, uh, our citizens, and they can request from ours. So they say it's a mutual exchange. But we know that we have you have any citizen investing in the OECD countries? Their citizens come here, and they come up with the term of harmful taxation policies. So speaker, the question, harmful to whom? They are saying that a lot of the money from the economy is leaving their shoes and come to ours. And they say that we cannot protect, we do not have legislation in place to protect it, so they call it harmful taxation. It's harmful to the economy. Every time, we come up with a new financial model. We had offshore financial services. We had to close it down to be independent, you know. They said you must be independent. You must grow your economy using your own domestic resources. We have the offshore financial services, offshore banking. They said, no, you are too small to control this large forms, they say. So you have to be transparent. And for them, transparent mean we must provide them with all the information, every name, the account information of everything of their citizens that come into our country. Of course, if in their country, they have a taxation policy that says you will pay 30% on interest earned in the bank. Well, if you have money, you don't want to pay 30% on the interest. So if we offer 5%, 
and you want to move your money, they must make the amendment to the law. You have a policy that is pushing people away from you to look to other jurisdiction because you want to invest where so you get the biggest return. That is how it's risk and return, you know. You invest in and you want a return. But every time they pass a piece of law, they look to the legislation, and as the member of St. Patrick said, they call it nice name now, the peer review. The two sides meeting to review it. But after the review, it gets a recommendation. Grader should amend its domestic legislation framework to ensure that the responsibility to fulfill the due diligence and reporting obligations remains with the reporting financial institution even if service providers are used. So they say Grenada should amend this domestic law that is not sufficient. Well, I agree that if you use a third party to do your reporting and do your diligence, the financial institution will be held responsible. I agree that. The financial institution cannot just hire a third party to provide, do, do the report, do all the due diligence, and if anything goes wrong, the financial institution don't want to turn and say, well, it's the third party that we say, no, 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 not the third party that has the obligation. You have the obligation as the financial institutions. So they are recommending that our weak legislation be changed to impose anything. That's one of the recommendations. They make, I'll just read two. The second one, it says, Grenada should amend this domestic legislative framework to include rules to prevent financial institutions, persons, and intermediaries from adopting practices intended to circumvent the reporting due diligence process. So you see, Grenada does not have a legislative framework in place to enforce the requirements in a manner that is consistent with the CRS, that is the mutual exchange of information. So we made a pass the principal act, they look at it and say, well, your legislation is still weak. You need to strengthen it. And I wouldn't be surprised, as a member from St. Patrick said, that's not the end, you know. I wouldn't be surprised next day they come back and say, put this in place. And to follow up on the point that the member from St. Patrick's West was making about our voice. And he knows that very well too. We have to go as a block, where CARICOM or ACP. I went to an ACP meeting and this taxation and blacklisting, Africa, Caribbean, Pacific countries putting them on blacklist. I said, listen, we need to speak as an ACP group, Grenada alone, a pressure Grenada, little Grenada could put on this big group. We have to come together in, as CARICOM, speaking with one voice, and then ACP that we belong to, to speak out on these matters, unless we do that. I want to have said, when uh, that meeting with the ACP, Every year at the United Nations, these same countries who put us on blacklist, they come for our support, you know, for the candidates, they put up candidates. Why are we supporting them? This is an opportunity to say, we will not support your candidate because you did not, you did not take any action to prevent us from being on a blacklist. In fact, some of them move because we know the country. The last time we were on, on the blacklist, we know the country who went to the Com European Commission to say, we have some citizens in Grenada, we cannot get them to report, and they put Grenada on a blacklist, just so you know. Because they went to the commissioners and report Grenada, and you get on a blacklist. Or they put you on a gray list, we move from black to gray. They like lists, you know. They always making lists, Mr. Speaker. To put pressure on small islands who are trying different, different financial and development models to come up. And as, let me, let me just say, as the member for St. Patrick West the, raised the issue of CBI, and maybe I will forward you the resolution. Our resolution went to the European Union Parliament <laughs> with concerning the CBI. They said no new member of the European Union could have a CBI program. And for third countries, by 2025, only, only three more years or less than three years, you know, we have, by 2025, they will review each one of us program and you know what they will do? They can't stop you from having it. There is a domestic, you are in the domestic legislation as a sovereign state. They say, what do they do? Remove the visa free entry. 
Well, well if they remove the visa, visa free entry, why is it valid your passport? People are, they want the passport because you could get visa free entry into Europe. But they have made it clear that they will review our program, CBI program. So we have to, we have to work aggressively with the two years that we have left. Otherwise, it'll crash. And you have some countries in CARICOM that use CBI money for recurrent expenditure. You know? <laughs> well, that's the worst way it could go. <laughs> so if, you, if it crash, what happens? We use our National Transformation Fund to transform the economy and use it on the capital side. But it's a trade to all of us because we have large projects here who are depending on the CBI sales to build, build a hotel. So by 2025, you did not complete your hotel going forward and you cannot get the CBI investment, then you will not be in a position to continue your development. So we have to come together as a group of all the countries, and, and in CARICOM you have some that do not have the program, some have it, but we have to work together with one voice to say, this is a model, it's an investment model that helping poor developing countries like ours to build, we help to be independent, to grow our economy, and therefore we have to spend time to lobbying these people, at least if we could get an extension beyond 2025, or they will come with a suite of legislation and say, you must pass all this in your thing. We want the name of every investor, every CBI investor. We want to know the name, the nationality, the amount of money invest. And unless you do that, then you cannot enjoy the visa-free access to Europe. So, we as small island developing states are always under pressure from the more developed country. And instead of assisting us to grow and develop e the economy so that we co become less dependent on them, these models that we have come up with are always under attack. And so I join with the member for St. Patrick's West in saying that I have some concerns, but I understand the nature as the leader of government business explained. Can you clearly understand the, 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 how the world operate, how financial institutions function, the role of the OECD and the other big uh, institutions? However, we have to do what we have to do in order to stay in this race together. So, Mr. Speaker, while well, I support it, I think. I need to point out these concerns um, that we have, but I think I support the amendment to this legislation. Thank you, Honorable Representative Foster David. Leader of Government Business. And thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I commend my colleagues here for their contribution. And this is not new, Mr. Speaker. Remember my prayer? Lord, help us to change the things that we can change. And help us to accept and move forward those which we cannot change. Because, Mr. Speaker, I have repeatedly said, that while a tiny country as Grenada must move along, we must ensure that the people at the helm understand how you operate in this environment. It is not Grenada alone, you know, as small as we are. It is a world environment. And if you don't understand how to move through the maze, then you perish. I have listened, Mr. Speaker, and becoming Minister for Finance, to the cries of many of our Caribbean leadership, the Prime Ministers of the region, who most of them are the Finance Ministers. And we have listened to passionate plea from many, many of those. The same plea. 
I remember in one case, Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister of Barbados said that for 32 years they have been fighting. And lo and behold, it appeared as if we were getting a breakthrough. <laughs> but in order to get that breakthrough, you have to go on a program with the IMF. So then, back you, the powers that be. In one case, Mr. Speaker, he fought and fought to be reclassified. You know, it's your GDP, your per capita income. So in Grenada, while it may appear high, you still have a small economic inertia. And he comes east That flywheel, the economic flywheel cannot turn. You know, it is useless. Because you get not, not even the shocks as if you got in the region. You know. A little shock, and then you falter. You know, a flywheel keeps you going when you have variation in your supply and demand, in the movement, in the drive, the input, and the output. In one case, Mr. Speaker, we were saying do not use for capita income alone. The IMF team agreed with us as many years ago. And they have been fighting, fighting, I repeat, while we blame the IMF organization for a lot of things. Who are the bosses? The G7. They came back and said, we fought for you. The managing director, the Western Hemisphere manager, Eastern, all of them, they fought for us. I had to compliment them. But they came back and said, we did not get you. So you must continue to be ranked and rated by your per capita income. If it's $12,000, you can't shift. The HIPC, highly indebted poor countries, the per capita income is very low. But when you look at how they operate, yes, they have many people. So you have many pockets of poverty. They get certain benefits that we in the region could never get. But I could tell you, the economic flywheel is strong. Shocks and so forth, it would go through. Not like ours, and you stall. So we asked them to use different metrics. Lo and behold, no way. So many of the things that we're fighting for, yes, we must make our voices heard. But when the big institutions like the IMF even fight for you and they cannot get you, you must recognize the pause that's there. And you have to strategize, and it goes beyond making your voices heard. I have a particular way in mind that I would not discuss, Mr. Speaker, here, because it is too revolutionary. And it has its pit walls as well. But we cannot agree, continue to survive, or to operate in this manner without doing something. I agree. I do not believe that we'll get very far, though. And many instances, unless we do the ultimate thing, and we may get through, or we may pay the penalties. So we have to organize, we have to understand the environment we're in and how we must traverse our motion in order to divide, to move forward. Mr. Speaker, remember, the churches, they thought that they could escape it. But down in the Middle East, a particular church, it may not be a Christian church, as we're familiar with here, got involved. The people putting money in a church and helping an illegal organization. Whoa, oh, and behold, every church. Can't tell them you're not there. They've called it non for profit, non profit organizations, and you can't escape. If they ask the state to look at you and to make your report, you have to. So we have to work with the powers that be, and this is what is happening here now. So we cannot sit idly by and let the strap fall on us without doing what is necessary. So I appreciate Minister Joseph and the members for St. Mark. He was a, a Minister for Finance, he understands. And I remember he's coming, he's always mad. <laughs> he,
Oh, sorry, the Bible for St. Patrick West. <laughs> sorry. Yes, and he, he, time and time again, he will come. And we all see in the same thing that we're pushed and we have to do something. We have to do it collectively, yes, but we have to do even more. And it does not stop. As a matter of fact, Mr. Speaker, the committee that we have set up to look at the liability and how we could move forward, the pension judgment, they brought in the cessation of revenues from the CBI. Everybody in the world is looking at it. The governor of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, his team met with the Treasury Department of the U.S. <laughs> and we know what the outlook is. It is not easy going forward. And if we continue to stifle us here and to stifle us there, we will need astute leadership, Mr. Speaker, for the, our small countries, not only in this region, astute leadership to traverse that maze, Mr. Speaker. Because while we stay outside and we say, oh, it can be done easily, we must never forget that. And what I am happy with, Mr. Speaker, the members here, they feel, they feel for our population. And I do not see anyone of us here, whether we in office or outside office, that will stop providing necessary and support to whichever government, Mr. Speaker. Because we understand, and there are those who don't, and those who do not have a clue but it is our duty and our responsibility to safeguard Grenada and the people. And the network, networking um, indicated by the member for St. David is very important. We cannot do it by ourselves. We must be able to persuade others to come along our side. And not only others in the Caribbean, Mr. Speaker, we must be able to persuade those close and at the highest economic levels. In other words, you must target even the G7 and the G20. You know, not reach the G7 only, but we could walk our way up and have that link because it is only through them, our countries, small dependent countries, will be released from the plight that we are under. So if we understand this, Mr. Speaker, Many, many people will not be able to sleep, you know. As you walk in the environment and you realize what is happening and you see the task ahead of you to meet the challenges, so you can't sleep at night because you or even Grenada might be doing better than a lot of the other countries. But when you look at them and you realize maybe some of it is not of their own doing, then you have to say, oh, we have a task ahead of us. So, Mr. Speaker, for the benefit of the leader of the opposition, well, I'm sure he, he understands the situation too. We did not come back here. Huh? For no reason at all. We came back here for a very, very important reason. And that is to ensure this was part. And as our, the board member said, this is only the, the start, you know. It will keep coming and coming and coming. What we have to do is to think ahead and move the economy in such a direction so that if it hits you, and you know what is the next wave, the solution, everybody is going to move to the digital area. So they'll move away from the CBI and the others, and the attack will be on the digital area. Digital money. That's where the attack will be coming from. That's what will be attacked in the very near future. In fact, it has already been attacked. So, Mr. Speaker, I compliment the contributions made by my colleagues, and I present the bill for its second reading. Thank you, Leader of Government Business. And I remember the question is that the bill the Mutual Exchange of Information and Taxation Matters Amendment Bill 2022 
be read a second time. Those who have that opinion say aye. aye. Of the contrary opinion say nay. I think the eyes have it. The eyes have it. A bill for an act shortly entitled Mutual Exchange of Information on Taxation Matters Amendment Bill 2022. Leader of Government Business. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg to move that the House resolves the seventh committee of the whole House to consider the bill clause by clause. Honorable Member, the question is that this Honorable House resolves itself into a committee of the whole House to consider the bill clause by clause. Those who have that opinion say aye. aye. Of the contrary opinion say nay. I think the eyes have it. The eyes have it. Honorable members, this house is now in committee. Clause 2, amendment of section 16 of principal act. And I remember the question is that Clause 2, Amendment of Section 16 of Principal Act, forms part of the bill. Those who have that opinion say aye. aye. Of the contrary opinion say nay. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Clause 3, Amendment of Section 21 of Principal Act. And I remember the question is that Clause 3, Amendment of Section 21 of Principal Act, forms part of the bill. Those who have that opinion say aye. aye. Of the contrary opinion say nay. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Clause 1, short title. And I remember clause 1, short title forms part of the bill. Those who have that opinion say aye. aye. Of the contrary opinion say nay. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Leader of Government Business. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I beg to move that the House resumes and the Chairman of the Committee reports progress on the bill. Honorable Member, the question is that this Honorable House resumes and the Chairman of Committee reports progress on the bill. Those who have that opinion say aye. Of the contrary opinion say nay. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Honorable Member, this Honorable House resumes. I have to report that the bill was considered by a committee of the whole house and passed without amendment. Leader of Government Business. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg to move that the Chairman's report be adopted. And I remember the question is that the Chairman's report be adopted. Those of that opinion say aye. Of the contrary opinion say nay. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Leader of Government Business. Give Mr. Speaker, I beg to move the third reading of the bill. Honorable Member, the question proposed is that the bill be read a third time. Honorable Members, the question is that the bill be read a third time and passed. Those who have that opinion say aye. aye. Of the contrary opinion say nay. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. A bill for an act shortly entitled Mutual Exchange of Information on Taxation Matters Amendment Bill 2022. Item number five, request for leave to move the adjournment of the House on matters of urgent public importance. Leader of Government Business. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg to move. The adjournment of this Honorable House sign a day. Honorable Member, the question proposed is that this Honorable House adjourn. Uh, Honorable Representative for St. Mark. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, with your permission, I would like to speak on the adjournment of, of this um, meeting, on the proposed adjournment, on a matter that is of great concern to me. I did not plan to do it. But as I sat here, it, it plagued me as it has plagued me over the last couple of days, and I just thought that I should raise it. Mr. Speaker, on, on, today's, on Tuesday, no, on Wednesday, I had the opportunity to join the member for St. John at a public meeting. 
in Mongrambi. And Mr. Speaker, we had a chairman, and while the chairman was speaking, a gentleman accompanied by a lady came almost up to his face and was filming the program. And the gentleman was asked several times, you know, distance yourself, give him a chance. And especially in the time for social, this time where we need to observe social distancing, it was even more offensive than it would normally have been. And the gentleman refused and he said it was his right to record. And, um, you know, some of us, and including me, as we said, well, the other the speakers have rights too. And so, you have a right. Can you distance yourself? But the gentleman persisted, and Mr. Speaker, it could have ended up in something very ugly. And I thank God for the restraint exercised by um, some of the persons in the meeting. There was a policeman present in plain clothes, and he approached and he tried to prevent him and say, well, you know, take your distance. And he continued. Mr. Speaker, it is no secret that one of our greatest strengths is the peace and stability in this country and um, that we have seen over the years and the restraint that our people have exercised and the, the general friendliness. And it came out, whatever the intention was, I cannot say of the gentleman, it came out extremely hostile. It seemed to be intimidating. Um, at one point, it got the chairman a little bit flustered because it, it, it's, it's hard to focus on what you're saying and have somebody who you don't know, whether it's friend or foe, just in your face with a camera. And I know we're going into what is sometimes termed the silly season, and we all know that election is in the air. Um, and uh, Mr. Speaker, I, I want to hope that this was just uh, a fluke, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, an isolated incident. But I think we need to guard against that. I, 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 I hope that we can um, look at some sort of law keeping in our public meetings. But I want to ask everyone, every one of the parties that would be involved in the elections and every one of the candidates to ensure that whoever their supporters are, and there's a new one that we don't know, a new sunshine face, I don't know whatever it is, but um, no, we, we owe it to this nation that whatever we do, whether it's elections or not, to maintain the peace and the stability and to exercise respect for, for, um, for each other. And the member for St. John reminded me here that a similar incident happened in Cloche. So it seemed to be trending. And before it goes too far, I want to urge that all of us instruct our supporters or whatever to keep the peace in this beautiful island of ours. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Representative for St. Mark. I must urge us and beg us, please, to respect each other. The entire nation, we have to respect each other. We are seeing the trending of everybody pushing something in the face to either get what TikTok, to what, 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 whatever name they call them. And we are borrowing from other territories, other countries, some of their behaviors and think that that is okay. But I think as Grenadians, we have to remember that respect for self and respect for our neighbor is of critical importance. I don't think it is a very cute thing to run up in somebody's face all the time with uh, something to take out the pictures. If I don't want my picture to take out, you can take it out, but take it out from a distance. You don't have to come up and jam up in my face. I don't like people to come pushing in my face. And especially in a time when I think I want you to keep your distance away from me. Um, so I, we just have to urge that we um, be respectful to each other. And please 
If you want to take a picture, take a picture at a distance, but don't spoil my fun. You can have your fun, but don't try to take away my fun from me. You know? It is unfortunate that we have come to that, that stage. And Anyhow, let's hope that good sense will prevail. Because we come into what? How you call the season? The silly season? The silly season. I don't know why they call it so. I don't find it so silly. Honorable members, honorable leader of the opposition. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, a lot was said here today, a lot to digest. And it seems like my sister says the silly season, sometimes I say the crazy season too. Mr. Speaker, when I came to this honorable house a few years ago, I believe I started, and you can recall, with Psalms chapter one. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the reservoirs of water that bringeth his fruit, his fruits in his season. Whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but like a chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment and of sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the ungodly. Maybe, Mr. Speaker, in conclusion, I can speak to Solomon. In Ecclesiastes 12, 30, the wise man says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandment, for God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. That was Solomon's conclusion. Mr. Speaker, you know, I have been involved in the political discourse of Grenada for a very long time, a very long time. Maybe from since 1984, 85 with Mr. Blaze. And sometimes I have discourse and I see people here probably sometimes get upset with what I say and how I say it and when I say it. The good lady said that I'm always welcome in the house and there is room for me in the house and the house. And I say that we have to have a clean in the, in the house. Mr. Speaker, you know, when I was cleaning house, some of my colleagues here today were still babies. When it was difficult to be NNP, I was in the house. And the difficulty I'm talking, really, Mr. Speaker, between 1989 to 1995, my travel with NNP, it was not because it was popular to do so. But at the time, especially in Karakou and Pity Martinic, it was the most difficult thing to do. I, sometimes I tell people, when I was stumping for NNP, my good friend from St. George Southeast, he was the, uh, the manager of Grand Lake at the time. <laughs> but Mr. Speaker, you can speak to NNP. And for the crazy season or silly season that we talk about, I had my, my fair share. Karakou in 95, St. George's Northeast in 2013 and 2018. Mr. Speaker, but with all this said, I must look back at the people of Karakou and Pity Martinic, 
the people of St. George Northeast who gave me their overwhelming support during those years because it was not always easy. And I always said that I have developed relationships that are almost like family now. So I have a lot of family. I have a lot of family in Caracol and Pity Nick. Yes, that is where my development was. But when I came to St. George's Northeast, Mr. Speaker, I was accepted into the fold of the family of St. George's Northeast. So the people of St. George Northeast, I can never maybe spend my last days here or even in this parliament at this time without expressing the gratitude for the overwhelming support. I mean, sometimes just a telephone call they would make just to see how I'm doing. And you know, Mr. Speaker, I say to God be the glory that when I say that I can walk in St. George's Northeast with my head up and nobody, no one, would point fingers at me because I, I, I ask the Lord to he that is able to keep me from falling. All praise, glory, and honor to the Almighty God. He has kept me thus far. And I know with assurance that he will keep on keeping me and he will keep on keeping St. George's notice. So again, if it's my last word here, I would say, to God be the glory. Great things he has done. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Leader of the Opposition. Honorable Representative for St. Patrick West. Thank you again, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I think it is well known by now that I will not be offering myself as a candidate or potential candidate. At this upcoming or any general elections in the near future. As I said not too long ago at a public meeting in Sotez, and to quote my good friend here, he seems to be a pastor. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, he said that there's a time and purpose for everything under the heaven. And there are times when you have to make your entrance, and times when you have to make your exit. I believe, Mr. Speaker, that after 25 years, in the political vineyard, it's time for me to make my exit. And therefore, it seems by all intent and purpose that this will be my last sitting in this house. And I therefore wish to take this opportunity to say thanks to the people of St. Patrick West who have supported me over the past 25 years to the extent of giving me victory in four of the five general elections that I contested, three of which I'm very happy to say that I was a member of the team that provided clean sweep. 99, 2013, and 2018. Mr. Speaker, if it was not for the overwhelming support of the residents of St. Patrick West, that was not going to happen. And therefore, today I say thank you very much to the people, the residents of Hermitage, Montreach, Montreal, Snell Hall, La Fortune, Madez, Lamour, Mali, Sotels, 
Mount Craven, Shanty Mall, Darby Prospect, Mount Williams, Redmond. For your tremendous support and encouragement. And I, it was indeed a pleasure serving you as your parliamentary representative in this noble institution. Mr. Speaker, when I started, I prepared in 1997 a 20-year development plan for St. Patrick. Not only St. Patrick, but St. Patrick as a whole. And that document was entitled St. Patrick 2020 Vision, my plan and vision. Today, Mr. Speaker, I can look back and say that in that plan, I have accomplished some of the tasks that I started off, endeavor to, to, to complete, but there are still a number of plans, projects that ought to be implemented. And I therefore wish that my successor will continue because government is a continuum, whether it is NNP or NDC, government is a continuum. And you know, there is this habit of, okay, once and if a government change and projects come to a halt, once projects are good for the country, Mr. Speaker, they should be continued by regardless with, with, with government from the, uh, with party from the government. And therefore, I'm looking forward to see a continuation of the major projects that we have started in St. Patrick. To the members of staff of my parliamentary office, I want to say thank you very much. Some have been with me from inception, showing their loyalty and support. Others who came along, I want to say thanks for the service you have rendered. Also, Mr. Speaker, I want to say thank you very much to you for your tremendous support and your guidance. I always look upon you, being your deputy, um, for that guidance. I admire the way you presided over the proceedings of this house. I've learned a lot from you. And I want to say thank you and your staff, my good friend, Mr. Andrew. I think he was um, part of the staff of the Ministry of Education when I was minister. I want to thank you very much for the clock of parliament now and the good work you are doing. And also my colleague parliamentarians who have struggled in the vineyard with me. And I want to point out in particular, Mr. Speaker, those with whom I started off with in 1999. The Honorable Gregory Boyne and Sister Clarice Modest. And together with the leader of our party, um, I want to say that we comprise the, the, the quartet who have achieved the trip, the triplet, the triplet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, three times, many three times. And therefore, I want again to, to thank the, the political leader, Dr. Pete Mitchell, for. Um, being part of his great team, both in the political arena as well as in the government, as a minister of government. And to all my other colleagues here, Brother Dabrio, my good friend from St. David, my fellow economist, and I really appreciate this, the, the, your presentation this morning. The young and upcoming stalwart from St. Andrew Northeast, my Sister from St. Patrick East, my dear friend, Sister Emlyn, and Mr. Speaker, something a lot of people won't know. And it might, it might just indicate my age or how old I am or how young Sister Emlyn is. But I taught her mother in secondary school. It sounds strange, but that is true. <laughs> and my very dear friend, Sister Delma. I will miss your, 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 your joyful disposition, that energy that you bring to the, uh, to the proceedings. 
my dear Dr. Gary Friend from Kerry Cool, and those who are not present, I say thank you very much. And for those who will be going on, continuing, I want to say Godspeed. I wish you all the best. And remember, put on the armor of God Amen. in this fight that we'll be fighting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, my dear friend, my deputy. I, I was listening to some farewell speeches there. <laughs> farewell speeches. <laughs> some people don't make farewell speeches. Um, honorable members, as we said before, it was a short a meeting today. Sitting would be a short one, but um, we learned that the Senate meets afterwards, and so I'm going to put the question. And I remember the question is that this honorable house now stands adjourned, sign it die. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Of the contrary opinion say nay. I think the eyes have it. The eyes have it. 